All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am your new favorite person, Wilson Fist, and I'm here today with my favorite Bullet Club brothers, Adam Smash and Fifth Boy. Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome. And today, we are going to be bringing these lovely folks our very first Royal Rumble prediction. Yay! Who's excited for the Rumble, guys? Yay! I, I this is my second favorite time of year. We... Right behind Survivor Series. I'm like the yeah. only one. Ah, oh, so man, we've got, what is it, six matches all together? Got both Royal Rumbles. I'm, I'm going to say some, it's you know, five, five to be exact. Well, let's see. We've got the Men's Royal Rumble, the Women's Royal Rumble. Uh, we've got Drew versus Goldberg. We've got Roman versus Kevin Owens. We have got Charlotte Flair and Asuka versus Nia Jax and uh, Shayna Baszler. Uh, Sasha Banks versus uh, Carmella. Yep. And I'm not really sure what else we have tonight. Thank you. I think that I think that about covers it. Uh, I, I mean, unless they throw some extra stuff on the pre uh, on the pre-show, which I'll be watching that anyway. Yep. Thank so, uh, so guys, uh, what what do you think is going to happen tonight? Who 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 you got in the rumble? Uh, I think. Um, I think somehow uh, Bliss is going to end up winning it in one form or another. Uh, a theory I have heard. I say, you think Alexa Bliss is going to pull it off? Yeah, in, in one form or another. Or maybe all three. <laughs> maybe all three. Yeah. She'll pull That's the teaser. I got a feeling that Jason Jordan finna up uh, appear back. I, I do hear that because it was some people that. about to pop back up that's, that's coming back for the Rumble. I think Brock Lesnar's going to make his face presence known, too. Uh, he might. Uh, yeah, I feel like we're going to be seeing him because we're rolling into WrestleMania season. And, you know, Vince don't do WrestleMania season without some Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, then again, don't forget about this person. He might show up because he's a free agent. RVD? Yep. Hey, you know, he made another RVD. one of my old favorites. I, I have missed RVD. Okay, we, we talking I mean, about RVD. I've seen him on Impact, but like I missed the I missed the like the highlights that we used to get out of RVD. Like I missed when he was ECW and WWE champion at the yep. same time. Hear that, hear that Pantera that, that, oh, and you're like, oh. Man. Yeah, that, that pay-per-view alone was, was very crazy. That whole pay-per-view was Oh, crazy. right. Then, even, like, like like, the time, even like the time when Heyman made the count for him to be the champion. Yeah. See, like, yeah. My, my only regret about that whole match was the fact that, you know, Edge came in and, you know, speared Cena and kind of won the match for RVD because I think it would have told a much better story for, like, RVD to just flat out beat Cena. And then Cena has to go back to Raw Monday night and everybody's just like, hey, where's our belt? Speaking of Cena, was that y'all that was, uh, that made that point about Cena's actually still trapped in Bray's universe? Yeah, he's technically, uh, storyline-wise, he's still trapped in the Firefly Funhouse. Yeah, so that's that's kind of kind of wild. Yeah, well, but there's so much yep. stuff with that. I mean, storyline-wise, like if you look at it, because you that, haven't seen him since the Firefly Funhouse. So, storyline-wise, John Cena is still trapped in the Firefly Funhouse. He's still yeah. lost in there. <laughs> uh, now, I, I will say. My prediction for the Royal Rumble, and this is, you know, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I really even had to say it. Everybody should know by now. Keith Lee. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Man, after the performance he put on last year, I'm ready to see Keith Lee just pouncing folks right he, out of the ring. He's going to last a while, I think. If, I, I feel, if, if nothing else, I feel like he should. Now, I hear people talking about, like, oh, well, they might be giving it to Daniel Bryan, you know, given his last big hurrah. And, yeah, yeah that's now, great. I, I, doubt, I doubt it'd be Daniel Bryan because he had the biggest run that year alone when he created the Yes movie. And well, that, I got to feel like if they were to give it to Daniel Bryan, it, like, 
as great as the guy is, I feel like it would sort of be a, a throwaway kind of thing because, like, he's already said he's on his last run in the ring. He's not planning on, you know, carrying on in-ring action much longer. So if you put the, if you give him that run at WrestleMania, you either have to have him lose or you have to have him, like, win the belt and then he's going to drop it back soon because, I mean, he's not going to be wrestling much longer. Really so it, it just kind of feels a throwaway to me. Well, yeah, it, that, that makes a good, valid point. What do you think I about just want to see Keith Lee win and go for Drew. What you think about Undertaker coming back this, tonight? I don't know how what they would do with him. Uh, other than just being a yeah, star. I don't either. I mean, he's already done the they've already done the retirement, and I know that Vince has been talking about like he wants to redo Undertaker's retirement like in front of a crowd, but like at this point, why? Let let him ride off into the sunset, you know? Yeah. I see, I see, the, I see Alistair Black coming back too. Oh yeah, dude, I would love to see Alistair Black come back, but my my worry is that if he comes back, Alistair it's just gonna be like they're gonna throw him in for a joke moment, be done yeah. with him, and then man, I want to, I want to see, I want to see the NXT version of Alistair Black come back. Tell you the truth, I'd rather Black. I think Black would be better off in AEW myself. I, I think I think, think it, uh, it would I think they would really benefit from having Tommy in show up and just start taking people out. Yeah, not just to come I, think, I like, think Tommy in would be an amazing addition to the uh, to the Dark Order. Yeah. What you th- what you what do you think about Alistair Black joining the Dark Order? Do you think he's a perfect fit? Oh, absolutely. Uh, right if the it like. I don't even want to say like somebody to take Brody Lee's place because rest his soul. Uh, mm. I don't think anybody could take Brody Lee's place, but like as far as like a, a higher power figure in the Dark Order or like they're they're like a hitman style character, man, to, like Alistair Black, Tommy End, whatever you want to call him, would be amazing. Okay, uh, I, I think I think I think, I think AEW would really benefit from. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna mess you up right now. I did mention CM Punk come um, trying. Well, I'm gonna say he's gonna come back tonight. I, I was there he, when you told me my back tonight? What if he come back tonight and Alistair Black and they end up meeting one on one in the ring? That would be. I think that would be a setup to an amazing match. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Man, oh, knees and kicks all over the place. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll take it. But I want it in an NXT ring. I want it at a takeover. I don't want it in WWE. I don't want it on a main roster match. All right, I want next it in match. NXT where they'll be like, go in there and need the hell out of each other. All right, Ooh. next match discussion. Goldberg, McIntyre. I want to see Drew win this so bad. Me too. <laughs> I think it's a squash match just like what Undertaker and Goldberg was. Yep. I just really think it's a squash match. <laughs> I think Goldberg just... I, I really think they're just using Goldberg to leverage other people now. I'm, I'm really good. hoping that's what's happening is like they're going to use Goldberg and like, man, make Drew look even stronger because like we've seen it happen the last two years and that's what everybody's scared of is that Goldberg's just going to come out of nowhere, get this title match he didn't do anything to earn and then squash this amazing new talent and yeah. then run off with the belt and lose to, uh, at WrestleMania. I mean, he's already had his day. That's the main thing about it, you know. Just mm-hmm. let the let the younger let the younger cats get it, man. Hey, man. They're gonna make a lot of people mad if they let Goldberg win this. Yeah. That's the bottom Let's line. See, the thing is, it's no crowd there, so it, yeah. it's like yeah. it's like the reaction gonna be different. Yeah. Well, now I've I've heard multiple times that. Uh, they're, what they're wanting to do is like they're wanting they wanted Drew to win the championship in front of like a live crowd so they'd have that reaction and that's great but like the moment's passed guys he's champion run with it stop stop shooting for these moments that you can't guarantee you're gonna get and man just let it happen let Drew be the champion he's been shooting to be for years yeah that's true they're good they're gonna they're gonna run a lot of uh, a lot of big spikes in that match. It's gonna be spear misses and 
Claymore misses and Claymore hits and Spear hits, and they're gonna keep getting up and pulling. And yeah. so it's gonna be a lot. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be that that Goldberg locker room headbutt versus the was it the the Glasgow kiss? Yeah. Oh, you know, it's just, Goldberg's gonna try to Brock Lesnar him. But it ain't and he's gonna realize real quick. Brock Lesnar tried that and it didn't work all that well for him either. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> that, that's one thing. Uh, that's one thing Bobby has been talking about for a while. Is if you pay attention, like WWE doesn't, they don't understand power levels. <laughs> right. Like, like I can understand. Like, all right, man. Well, we had a match and I kind of got screwed out of that one. I want another shot, but like. Man, John Cena got in the ring with Brock Lesnar and got slung like a child yep. for like 20 minutes. And Cena like he know. was a helpless child who just stole something from this man. And Cena's and then one he's, of the strongest, you know, wrestlers they had. Yeah. And, and then like grown man and Brock, like that, you know, there was literally that moment in the match where you could see it on Cena's face. Like, I can't hurt this dude. I can't right. do anything to him. And Brock's just like, come on, boy, get back up. You know, and then you turn around the next month and he's sitting there telling Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan, like, I'm going to beat Brock Lesnar and I'm going to show you people what my legacy is all about. Like, man, John, at this point, your legacy is please stop hurting me, Mr. Lesnar. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. That's right. T-shirts and towels. Yeah, right? right? T-shirts and towels here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really think that if, I really think if he had kept the gimmick when he was the hardest you know, the hardest rapper and everything. If he had kept that gimmick, it would have been went on somewhere. But when he grabbed those- I think they would have been able to do a lot more with it. They probably would have eventually, you know, they always eventually pull away from gimmicks like that, but I think they could have let it go on a little longer, give it a little more, a little more notoriety. Yeah, yeah. All right, what, what's another yeah. What's another Rumble match I'm kind of interested in? I We've got up. Sasha Banks we versus Carmella. We never made our which... prediction for the men's Royal Rumble. Oh, I predicted Keith Lee. You predicted Keith Lee. What did you say? I, I got um, I got AJ Styles. AJ Styles. Oh, man. I really can't say who's going to win that one. I Because they're saying Edge and uh, Randy Orton is number one and number two. Now. They gon' they they That's gonna fight. They gonna they just really gonna be in that fight. They yeah, they're probably gonna end up eliminating themselves. Yeah, the and that's gonna come another feud. Then yeah. we, we we actually forgot about um, the fiend. He yeah, might end up no, just appearing out of nowhere. I brought that up earlier. Like, okay. What if, he, yeah. what if he just appeared? Like I was gonna I was saying, what if Alexa Bliss comes into the men's Royal Rumble and stands in the middle of the ring looking all creepy and. Let me in, and then all the lights go out and come back on, and, the and, then, and then the fiends just show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That will be the way, the way she does his move is like she does it better she than does him. It better than he does. Yeah. Like, she did. Like, but that that whole snatch. No, that she does it, man. Now I'm talking about how she dropped it. it was, oh yeah. I was like, wow. As a matter of fact, when she dropped, who did she drop? The uh, I think her last tag team partner. It was Oscar. Oh, Nikki, no, uh, Nikki Cross. Yeah, when she uh, dropped, she's done it to Oscar. Yeah, she did it to Oscar yeah. Monday. Yep. Dropped the hell out of her. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I said, man, that's that's my my only regret is that they're they're kind of tearing Oscar down to build her up like this because there's there's this great opportunity to bring that that crazy psycho killer side of Asuka out because, you know, as, as I've heard it stated a couple of times, Asuka and Io Shirai over in Japan made their, they made their names by being basically murder bastards. So let them go back to that. I like, let Asuka do that. I, I don't like Asuka being like, oh, oh yeah, I danced for you. No, you're the world champion. You should not be terrified of this. Right. Like, like you, know, you gotta think. You gotta think about who's running it behind the scenes. You yeah. got Paul Heyman is really running raw well right now. Well, no, it's Bruce Pritchard. Uh, actually, a little while back, uh, yeah, it was a little while back that Bruce Pritchard took over. So it's Bruce Pritchard's running raw and SmackDown right now. Like they let Paul Heyman. What, they let what Adam Pearce is doing? Huh? Adam Pearce. 
He's, he's, just, he's, like, he's basically man. like the interim he's basically not Raw or SmackDown general manager, but he is Raw and SmackDown general manager. So oh, baby, uh, he playing so baby he's playing like a commissioner, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, he's in that he's in that acting role right now. Yeah. He's he's in the commissioner role, if you will. Now, we was talking about my homie at work, Adam Pierce. A lot of people forget his back history when he was the NWA champion. Oh, yeah. That man was vicious. Man. One of the greatest folks, man. He was vicious, yeah. man. Yeah. And then, and that's the thing, man. Yeah. I was looking forward to it. Like I, you know, I didn't want to see WWE make a joke out of him, knowing what he could do when they were first started talking about this, uh, this whole feud with Roman Reigns. And hey, we're gonna have him fight him at the Royal Rumble. Great, but like I want to see a point where you see what Adam Pierce can actually do. Don't let him be that little weak dude that get like they would have done with Bischoff or Heyman right. or any of these other people. Like, oh well, I'm actually, actually in there with a big wrestler and I'm gonna get beat up and you get slung right. around and your clothes tore up and made to look like a chump. This is a five-time NWA World Champion. You, I promise you, Roman Reigns is not about to make him look like a chump. I got a feeling. Still do it too. I got a feeling. I got a real good feeling that somebody from New Japan Pro Wrestling finna debut tonight. Oh yeah. And I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be Switchblade. Yeah, because they showed that switchblade on that uh -huh. closer thing. Yep. So I said uh Children. Yeah. Now we was talking All about right. Switch we Children's. was talking about Switchblade. About what? We was talking about Switchblade debuting tonight. Do you think he's gonna debut since he done left? Switchblade? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep count of who all they've they've approved for the Royal Rumble so far. Because like you said, it's gonna be Edge and Orton starting it off. Well, it's, it's gonna be some surprises though. Yeah, it's gonna be some surprises because we got. Th I mean, that, that's just two out of thirty spots. Uh, which, of course, we've got people like AJ Styles, Sheamus, you know, guys like that in there. Keith Lee is obviously in the Rumble, so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know who's going to show up tonight, man. It's one of the reasons that the Royal Rumble is my second favorite time of year. Well, actually, know? what time does it start tonight? Uh, I want to say around six is the normal time. Uh, I'm going to be think, checking my. I think I'm the, going to be checking my network around four or five. Yeah, I just think to the, make sure. I think the uh, pre-show starts at like four thirty, five o'clock. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well then, I'll have my WWE. Network. Oh yeah, I they on the network now. They have the raw that I was on there. <laughs> oh yeah. I got the time codes wrote down in my phone, so you can go to certain times on there and see and I, i'll tell you i'm like i'm on the i'm on the far left or i'm in the front or i'm up here <laughs> <laughs> I look said, hey we're, we're gonna have to all try to get in the I'll thunderdome one night yeah yeah it's i just want to get into that thing man you got to keep on messing with it it takes forever i want to see the angry chef when i see it <laughs> <laughs> Look up in the crowd, see the big an uh, animated. Then you know what? It'd be crazy if they show him on the Titan Tron when the Fiend comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hack into the hack into the Titan Tron. Yeah, that'll be so crazy and dope. With my spatula, let me cook your steak. <laughs> Oh. Why are you drinking that rock gut stuff? <laughs> Who? What? Oh. Real men, real men drink Jim Beam. <laughs> From sun up to sun down. Every day. Real men drink whatever will will rot the gut away. Real men drink the breakfast. <laughs> Mix it with a little orange juice. It's good for you. I ain't, I ain't. I had not drink alcohol in no, almost three years, and I'm so glad I am. It's a it's a very yeah, sparing it's thing for me now. It, it, it's good. I mean, it, it's good because I'm I'm trying to get away from a lot myself. So. I hear you. All right, next oh, one. What's our next one? Yeah. Uh, now, do we want to do we want to keep talking about the regular matches, or do we want to move on to the women's run? We already did the women's Ooh, Now that women's rumble gonna be real tough because we got a whole lot of women in NXT that oh, might man. debut in the room. 
I personally want to put my bid in for Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. Yeah, I feel like she's. I, I feel like yeah, they. Did she just jump? She just went to main roster. roster uh, main roster. Yeah, she. Uh, I think they just finished a feud would, with her would, and Mercedes Martinez. Uh, and she ended up losing the feud, so you know that's kind of NXT's call to hey, you're heading up to the main roster now. I don't keep uh, up with NXT enough to know. It's and, NXT's and kind of where it's at, man. Times, but when uh, when Adam uh, who was Adam Cole, baby? Why has it? Why why has it Adam Cole then went to the main roster? They just using them. But I think it's because right now, uh, I think it's because right now the Undisputed Era is kind of such a mainstay, like sort of cornerstone for uh, for NXT. Uh, I mean, because you know, uh, Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Bobby Fish, uh, Kyle O'Reilly. That, that's four names that man put them together with people like Finn Balor, folks like that. They could get in there and go. You know, they can get in there and keep the show going. Uh, people have talked about, like, the whole group coming up, but they've still got some stuff that they're doing with them. Like, apparently, they're right now, they're giving them sort of a, a, a babyface faction push. So, I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll see what they choose to do with them. Uh, they've been, you know, they've been talking about bringing them up for a little bit, and I'd love to see it. They, man, some of them may pop up in the rumble tonight who knows yeah that that women's rumble is going to be interesting because it's going to be a lot of uh a lot of like double double throwouts and one hitting the ground and one not hitting the ground or both of them hanging on the rope or pulling hair or going shopping or something it's going to be it's going to be uh I I worry that I worry that it's going to be a bunch of uh, a bunch of eliminations that are going to be really fast just, and you can't keep up with it. Yeah, really throwaway kind of stuff because I mean, let's face it with the women's division, they've got some very insanely talented women, but WWE does not know what to do with a really talented female superstar if their last name isn't Flair or Rousey. Speaking of which, I'm thinking it's going to be a lot uh Flair's going to be in it for the majority of it, and uh, Lacey Evans is going to stay in there for a while, and it's going to come down to them two in a big brawl, yeah. and then somebody somebody you never expect would win is going to end up eliminating both of them. Yeah, probably. Like that, some screwy well, thing like that. You know, what, do, what do you think about some of the old entrances? I mean, it, it can be some old people coming back. I, I've heard, again, coming. rumor of Trish and Lita. Yeah, uh, that would so, be and cool. Of course, I mean, I'm never mad to see Lita. I'm oh, yeah. never like, Woo! see Lita. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if what now? Now, what if Sable come back? Uh, I was never really all that big on Sable. Worry about her. Yeah, she <laughs> look. She was never Sable one of those in ring talents I paid a whole lot of attention to, mostly because she didn't have a whole lot of in ring talent. Yeah, yeah. Now, like, she was person. she was pretty, I guess, at one point. He was fake. Guy, it was enough to make Vince McMahon destroy Mark Marrow's career. Yeah. Uh, Look, hey, Sable was always a, a, a bathtub floaty to me. <laughs> I thought she was. Like, it, I don't know, man. Looking back on it, like, it was different when you were a teenager because, like, man, whatever WWE put out, you'd be, you'd, man, yeah, more wrestling. Movie. But, yeah. But now, I, now, I, now, I wouldn't mind seeing Mark Marrow come out. I wouldn't mind seeing him. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if I don't know if we'll be seeing him in a ring anymore. He's he's doing the motivational speaking thing now. Well, well, it would be great to it. see him come back because I gotta, don't know if you've seen him recently. Like, he's in think phenomenal about shape. This. You gotta think about this. DDP came back just for you know just for that you know. So. You well, yeah, but DDP is always down to always down to diamond cut or somebody. Man, he down to cut the shit out of his slave when he came back. <laughs> I mean, look, hand he hand later. Like, he just wants to wrestle. You know what? Going back you know, to you, go ahead. <laughs> now it just it was just the fact that he held his hand and like he was taking him to the prom. He just grabbed his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
DDP was always so smooth like, with it, man. Uh, it was, I don't know. DDP was always so smooth with it. And I, and I give Orton all the credit in the yeah, world. Fine. The dude literally can hit that RKO from anywhere. But the RKO wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the diamond cutter. One for the diamond cutter. Let's that's be just, real. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. It's DDP, buddy. Well, the Stone Cold Stunner. The yeah. Stone Cold yeah. Stunner wouldn't exist for, for John Laurinaitis. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Which is weird to say. John yeah. Laurinaitis gets to take credit for something. So weird. That's right, I invented the Stone Cold Stutter. Right. <laughs> you people oh, should be giving me some appreciation. And I called it the Laurinitis Laryngitis. Wow. <laughs> it was it was the laryngitis drop. <laughs> it was called The people the awesome loved it, I promise you. Now what's the famous slogan? People power. <laughs> because I am all about people power. <laughs> okay, last but not least, Roman Reigns versus Kevin. I think they're gonna. I, I think uh, Reigns is gonna end up beating him like by the skin of his teeth. I really want to see Kevin Owens beat. I him do Reigns. too, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh. I mean, did you see how he just he just powerbombed him through that table? Yeah, but usually on the the, the TV taping before the pay-per-view. Whoever wins that one oh, is going to lose. Man. Scott West is... Uh, yeah, he's glitching out. Yeah, we'll give him a second to catch up. I'll, I'll sure ever watching this. I love you. Love watching you. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty wild. All right, uh, next topic. Um, let's go. All right, let's see. So we did... So we covered the men's rumble. We've covered the women's rumble. We have covered Goldberg versus Drew. Uh, we've covered Roman versus uh, Kevin Owens. What about? So next time. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Blair and uh, Evans. Carmella. Are are they are are they actually even going to have a match? Because I think that Flair is supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to be Oscar and Flair versus oh, okay. Nia right, Jax right. and uh, Shayna Baszler. You're right. Which I kind of feel like Shayna Baszler and uh, Nia Jax are going to take the belts back. Yeah, probably. Uh, I just, I just don't feel like this whole Oscar Charlotte Flair tag. If they, if they don't win, now, I, I really think if they don't win, I think they're going to turn on each other. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, that they'll probably pin it off as like all of this stress building up on Charlotte. She just turned on Oscar. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, should they might turn around and pull it off. Oh no. It's gonna be fun watching finding out though. Think, now you gotta think about it, Oscar. Yeah, now you gotta think about it. Oscar and Flower always have a little beat, you know, way before oh, yeah. they got on the like roster. Oh yeah. It 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 struck me strange when they started doing this tag team thing anyway. I was like, really? <laughs> yeah, I kinda figured it would be now, a like now, it, it felt now, like a one-off kind of thing, but not a like we're gonna keep them as a tag team. You know what? Up. You know what I'm thinking? What's you know up? what I'm really thinking, guys? I'm thinking that I'm thinking that uh Charlotte Flair acting like her daddy at the time when Flair and Sting was actually a tag team. Oh yeah. And now turned on Sting. Uh -huh. I'm really thinking that's gonna happen. It could be. Uh, it could Hell, be cause hey. she, she could turn around and do something to make Daddy proud. He, she could be duping Evan. They could both of them could be duping Evans and uh Oscar. And Oscar. Oscar. Maybe. And you yeah. never know. They're the dirtiest players in the game. Because they're horsemen, after <laughs> all. <laughs> I'm still waiting oh, on the man. I'm still waiting on the horse women to have. I'm still waiting on that. Man, I don't know if oh, we forgot about Becky Lynch. She might come back. Yeah, she that that is a possibility. Maybe. With because her cute little blonde head itself. They want to build versus Rousey for WrestleMania. Like, no yeah. Charlotte Flair this time. You're right. Mm. Uh, now, here's another... Uh, Do you uh, think Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins going to come back? You know? yeah. I feel like Seth Rollins might show back up in the Rumble. Yeah, yeah, he, might. I, he might. I feel like he might come back. 
Becky Lynch, uh, I feel like there's a little bit less of a chance just because, you know, maternity yeah. leave. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. but I mean, tonight would kind of be the perfect night for Becky Lynch to come back and reestablish her, her place in the women's division. Or... One of them got to watch the kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey man, they're making up. Becky Lynch alone makes <laughs> enough money; she can afford a damn good sitter. Oh yeah. Uh, no, we were talking about. You sit here until I come back. I gotta do what? At this point, Becky Lynch makes enough money; she could be like, "No, no. Seth, I'm coming back. You stay here and watch the right. kids." Right. I'm sorry. Did you say something? Now you know. <laughs> now you look. You know, in one person we actually didn't mention. And I think Bianca Belair might do a little something in this room. Dude, I'm not going to take anything away from Bianca Belair. She's another one of, like, if it's not Rhea Ripley, she's another one of my absolute top picks. Bianca Belair using, has been. start using enough. her hair like a bullwhip. Oh, dude, like she did yeah, in NXT, like, like literally NXT. start utilizing her hair like yeah. a weapon? Man. I miss it. I miss it. Whirling around like a lasso. <laughs> like there's there's a reason that Bianca Belair until Charlotte Flair got involved in it was like absolute number one contender. Nobody else could have competed with Rhea Ripley for that championship. Belair is man, she's legit, dude. Belair is is oh, I know she's money. I seen it. <laughs> I seen it. I was there. <laughs> but yeah, it. I, I I definitely would would not be above throwing my money in for Bianca Belair. Uh, I I'm putting my money on Rhea Ripley because I feel like it's it's about time they they gave her a little bit of that back after what they did to her with Charlotte last year. You know what you know what I would like. It might, yeah, now, I, it might be your connection. Do what? Locked up again. Yeah, I don't know because I'm still here. No, you know, you know what <laughs> I would I would love to see during the uh, Charlotte Oscar uh, Baszler Jack match. What's that? Get, uh, Steve McMichael to come out and commentate. Oh man, <laughs> that would be so funny. Steve Mongo McMichael. Yeah, I would love to see wow. that man. Just him because he's like got fat and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to see, oh, you want to see Steve Mon and Michael come back? <laughs> no, I want to see him come out and commentate uh, Charlotte Flair and Oscar's match. But, mm. I'm a up D. I got this football <laughs> and this poodle. <laughs> <laughs> I used to look, play now, football. Yeah. Now, look, I I was actually watching Steve acting acting like Dusty Rhodes. I said, yeah. man, this is crazy, man. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I loved it. I loved every bit of that. Yeah. Ding a baby. Ding a baby. <laughs> I want you to glow in the dark. <laughs> if you will. If you will. <laughs> <laughs> what did he used to say? Uh, uh, it's a sea of heads out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sea of heads. We're gonna, we're gonna put the blue makeup on you, and we're gonna put the red makeup on you, and some yellow makeup on you. I want you to glow in the dark, baby. The lottery knocked him on his ass. Oh my god. Oh man. What else? Just a, oh, another amazing soul. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Hey, he, brought, he, brought, when he, when he brought that charisma to rap. I can't say it that. really did, man. Uh, God bless the dream, man. Now I gotta get to, I gotta get to this one. I gotta get to this one though. Macho Man on the mic. Macho Man on the mic oh, was man. always traumatic. <laughs> like there there was nobody who could match Macho Man on the mic simply because like you couldn't keep up with that level of madness. Who else could take some coffee creamer and make a promo out of it? Right? <laughs> Somebody was showing up to promo practice every week. <laughs> Snap into a slip, Jim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Forget where you come from, brother. You don't have to like it, <laughs> but accept it. <laughs> 
I'm a little scared, but not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we could sit through oh, this all day. Not... Oh yeah. Him and DDP shoot him and DDP oh, had man, the greatest shooting ball. <laughs> Like Elizabeth, should I give it now or later? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, now, do y'all remember when Kim? Do y'all remember when Kimberly um turned on DDP and uh, Slick joined the New World Order? Yeah. Yep. But it's like they just really just kind of closed it off as well. Like you notice that they they kind of had that storyline running that was for a while though. Silver NWO, though, wasn't it? Yeah, like you know, yeah. the NWO like, oh, and so, like the NWO had a bad habit of that too. It would be like, man, this dude has been like running with this chick as his valet for a while, and all of a sudden, like he's feuding with the NWO, and man, they're totally on the same side. And then it comes down to the big match, and the chick betrays him and joins the NWO, and then it's well, if you want to be with your chick, you got to be NWO now. Yeah. Like they did that a couple of times. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You remember Elizabeth was in there for a while before my Elizabeth career. was like the first female member of the NWO. She didn't like it. Excuse my French though, but she didn't say shit. She just come out and look crazy. Yeah, she just come out and look pretty. <laughs> uh, uh, she, she'd act like she was pretty much being taken hostage because Macho wasn't there with her. Yeah. They were divorced at that point, so I, I don't know what they were doing. As, yeah. Character acting, man, they're really good at it. They made, they made her pretty vicious after a while, though. She was doing some dirty crap. Yeah, after a while, she kind of got into it. Yeah, she, she, she got up there. Well, well, let's see. What else have we got left on the car? Like, really? About it, man. Eh? left is Sasha Banks yeah, and man, Carmella, man. which... I I mean, Sasha Banks and Carmella, which, let's be real, I, I, I think Sasha Banks is going to take it. Yep. Uh, unless Bailey comes out. Yeah, yeah, unless Bailey screws her out of it. I, now, well, well, you got to think about it. Uh, Bailey and, uh, you know, she kind of got that little feud going with uh, Bianca right now, so she pretty much ain't going to worry with them. Yeah. I if think she Bay- won a title think, back, she would. I think, if anything, Bailey's going to help Sasha win it so she can fight her the next time. She might want to fight at WrestleMania. But hey, it's the Royal Rumble. It's one of the most unpredictable times of the year. I am so glad uh, Bailey's a heel now. Yeah. Gee, that that happy, wavy, oh, that crap made me mad. Like, Like, it was was fine in NXT. It was fine in NXT for, like, I guess back when it was still considered developmental. Mm. Didn't translate well to the main roster. Right. <laughs> it just didn't. But yeah, man, that's I mean, that pretty much covers the Royal Rumble. But man, I'm I'm excited about it because regardless of what we predicted here, regardless of what we talked about, man, this is the most unpredictable time of the year. Yep. You don't know Fire who's gonna show up at the Rumble. You don't know who's gonna show up, who's gonna do what, who's gonna betray who, who's gonna win the whole thing. All right, let, let's, hey, since we're through with that, let's change gears over to AEW for a second. You know what? You know what's crazy? What's that? Huh? What up, Biff? What's up? Wilson is talking. Wilson is talking in six bit right now. Yeah. Hey, he sounds fine on my end. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cool. Right. Nah. What was yeah, your I don't know. I guess. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I guess. What'd you say? I said your your feed screwing up real bad. Okay. Okay. There you go. Right, there you Sitting go. here, cutting a video with Fifth and Adam. Oh, cold. That's okay. We're almost done. All right. Yeah. It just, look, he, he's doing one of Vince Russo's cuts right now. He's taking a phone <laughs> call in the middle of the I said, I'm going to edit all these <laughs> between things anyway. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Unless it's funny, you know, then I'll just do it. Look, it's Tony Schiavone on the phone at TNA. Dude. 
Now Wilson. You gotta put his headset back on. Uh, I want you. There you go. Now, now uh, Wilson. Yes. The next time you get off the phone and sweet talk, please do it without this Russo uh, reaction. <laughs> <laughs> look, you just look. You got off the phone. You're like, hey, just cut, just cut the promo with it off. Feel for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> Just doing the thing. Look, I mean, you, you actually did it like Vince Russo was just leaving the, 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 the audience and going to the back and just starting talking. Like, 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 hold on a second, let me take this. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all remember that telephone that Paul Hammond used to use? I want one of those. I'm old school. <laughs> I want one of those big ass old. Yeah, man. the big cell phones. He used to stay breaking that across somebody's neck. 16 foot antenna on it. <laughs> The Dangerous Alliance. In the door. Man. Yeah, uh, switching gears to AEW for a second. Okay. Uh, Sting and Darby Street Fight. What y'all think of that? How's that going to go? I, I think it's going to be good. I, I think it's going to be really good. I'm really digging this whole, like, Sting and Sting Jr. story that yeah. they have going with him and Darby Allen. Uh, and I, I, I dig the hell out of it because I'm a, I, I like Darby Allen. He's he's one of my favorite people, especially in AEW. Uh, and that coffin drop gets me every time. Like, How do you still have a spot? It's, it's, it's sick though. It's it, sick. it is. It is sick. I love I it. Like, man, <laughs> How have you I not? Know what yeah. That 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 match he had with Cody Rhodes, like. You know, normally there's points where you see, like, they'll grab them and throw their opponent into the turnbuckle or they'll throw them into the ring post. And, you know, most of them, they'll just, you know, let the turnbuckle catch their gut. They'll take it to the shoulder. Darby Allen said, man, cowabunga it is. And as soon as Cody threw him, he, like, slung himself sideways and took, like, went between the turnbuckles and hit that steel post back first. Like, he did that move for a minute and then swung around the pole. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not convinced that his bones are actually bones. Yeah, they're, they're uh, uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, <laughs> some uh, strange flexible material. Silicone, silicone uh, yeah, it's like some like kind of, looking mate. it's like a pipe cleaner. Made me think about the Terminator for a minute. Uh, it's like a pipe yeah, cleaner. He's got pipe cleaners. Is there like some kind of carbon fiber or something like that? It's not right. really both. What about uh, Omega and all this uh, impact back and forth nonsense that's going on right now? I, I dig I it. Really think, I, I think, think it's good for the truth. Yeah. I, I tell you one of the one of my favorite things about all this is uh, the back and forth between like because everybody's immediate reaction is like man they showed up on Impact like on an Impact pay per view and <clears throat> they're decked out in Bullet Club shirts you know and, I mean a lot of it turns out to like man the young bucks basically just told you know the young bucks in the club basically told Kenny like hey man it would be really cool if like we all came out wearing Bullet Club shirts Kenny didn't think twice about it he just threw a Bullet Club shirt on and came out there you know represent the club and everybody immediately said what's Tama Tonga gonna think about this <laughs> and Tama Tonga immediately just like see y'all fools trying to bring back the Bullet Club when the Bullet Club's still over here in New Japan so now we've got more feuds building and I'm here for it <laughs> they need to have Omega wrestling a little more though he they don't, do he don't they don't wrestle enough like I like they need to it's have him like, like they need to have him be that guy that, same thing. they need to have him go out there and basically like be that matchmaker like go out there and get in the ring with whoever wants to shot hey, you can't beat the champ anyway you know make him that guy that's, I'll be that's glad, what they're shooting for right? i'll be glad when this thing and team task stuff's over with so Sting can go pick on somebody else <laughs> and hopefully it's going to be uh all the all those guys. You know, really, that's one of my only complaints of, as, as far as AEW goes nowadays. It's like you've got some really good villains or villain stables or groups, but you're not dealing what you should with them. 
Look at the Dark Order. I want Man, the Dark thing. Order I should be absolutely... Jericho get into it somehow. Yeah, like, I mean, old... stuff like that, I'm 100% for. But they like, never really fought got... back in the WCW much. No, I don't think they did. They did, uh, like... Well, I mean, I, I think... Maybe, yeah. But but I, I think by the time they would have even had a chance to really, really run across each other, like, Taz was probably already uh, out of the game. It was when Jericho had, like, just got there kind of thing, when Sting was still... Oh, yeah, back, was, back in the day. Yeah, he fought him, like, a long time ago. I think, I think Jericho, when he was at WCW, he really had his full potential. Oh, yeah. But when he jumped over to WWE at the time, I think he really just came out with it. Oh, yeah. 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 He, yeah he, he well, I, I feel like Chris Jericho saw a sinking ship and was just like, man, these people are not going to do any better with me than they're doing now. I'll try WWE. And he went but, over there. And they were WCW, they, WCW pushed him more than a lot of those groups though. They did. I mean, they they, they just, for whatever Ryan. reason, was this yeah, I, oh, oh, man, as far as, like, cruiserweight, television, United States Championship like that, like, they, they kept him, you know, they kept him top-tier mid-card, but he was WWE's like, the one he was, was like, like we'll put the belt on. And taking their masks. Wearing that them was them. actually a really cool run. Yeah, that, that actually was a good run, though. Uh, I, good I, good. Damn good I loved his feud with Malenko. Uh, oh, yeah. But he was, like, the man of a thousand and four holds. <laughs> yeah. Arm uh, drag! <laughs> Reverse arm drag! Arm drag. He said arm drag like 30 times. <laughs> number, number 55! Arm drag! Number 980! Arm drag! <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I mean, Chris, uh, you know, Chris Jericho and Dean Malenko was that was one of my favorites. When, when he started that lift stuff, that's the first thing I thought about was that lift. Yeah, the thousand and four holes. What, what was the big? What was the big guy's name that we used to be with? Oh, Ralph. 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 Yeah. yeah, he was a truck driver, and they they put him in there for some reason. Man, I, I'm telling you, if you, security. if you have never taken the time to to listen to it. Uh, go check out Inside the Ropes and listen to some of Chris Jericho's stories about like about Ralphus. Yeah. Like he he loves talking about Ralphus and the crazy stuff that they did. And he'll tell you in a heartbeat, like he was a great guy. He was like a super sweet guy. Really dumb, but super sweet guy. <laughs> he had no idea what we were doing out here. Right. All right. Well, uh, uh, guys, any uh, closing thoughts? Uh, I'll tell you one. I think that was a pretty good discussion. Well, I, was, I was just going to talk about Chris Kane. He was one of the, the best wrestlers yeah. to me. Better oh, man, yeah. Better of offense. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Who's better than Canyon? Nobody. That's mm -hmm. right. I look, man, Nobody. I'm, speaking of which, I was watching an old Mortis versus, uh, he, I, I don't, he wasn't fighting Glacier. He was fighting somebody else, but he decimated this dude. I was like, God. Like, I don't remember I, Mortis being that bad. But he was I, bad. I remember that was something I really dug in WCW was like, Glacier, you know, for a teenager at the time, I thought Glacier was really cool. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Mortal Kombat Ninja. <laughs> he's here in WCW, and he's going to beat everybody up with ninja kicks. And yeah, that was it was awesome. And then Mortis came along and I was like, like oh, wait a minute. I guess this is Scorpion, I guess. Yeah. Is this guy supposed to be like reptile or something? Yeah. And then the big guy, was it Rat? Yeah. yeah. Adam Bomb. And then Adam Bomb. Adam Bomb. Oh, oh man. Like Adam Smash. But yeah, uh, Adam Bomb. Don't forget this yeah. guy. Who that? Don't forget this guy, Alex Wright. Alex Wright. That's <laughs> one the key. <laughs> when he became Berlin at the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, Berlin. I remember that. I like that stuff. Oh, man. Okay. See, we're going to have to sit down and do some, like, old WCW footage and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I was telling Fist, uh, one of these days we need to get the, uh, get, uh, get Robert into 64 and get a couple more controllers and play some uh, No Mercy and uh, uh, Revenge. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah. And, and, like, you know, Record it and get, get down on some real old yeah. school stuff. I'll show y'all what it's all about.
I'm gonna play, yeah, but I need I need to do a little practice because I haven't played this since high school. Oh, we'll oh, man. I give you plenty of time to practice. <laughs> look, I didn't, I, didn't have, I didn't have look, look, we didn't have much practice on more to come back. I felt betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> that was just for entertainment purposes. <laughs> this, be, this, this is going to be the real deal. Oh, the, hey. Gorilla Gorilla McGilla kind of thing. You put in out that stick, you forgot about the more to come back on that one. Yeah, oh, boy. I'll whoop you on that, too. I'll whoop you on that, too. I'm all about it, buddy. Yeah. Hands is rated E for everybody. <laughs> give me, hey, give me, give me Rico, and I'm straight. Rico? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know, man. I, I'd have to look at the roster on on that one and see who I want to pick. It, it was, I told you, look, I told you. You're talking about a trilogy, man. That was. No, I'm talking about part four. It, yeah. Oh, it, it was four? Up, Scorpion and Quan Chi were <laughs> were the the dudes on that game. Now, now it's Quan Chi had like crazy Quan Chi thing. had one of the he, he had one of the dumbest finishers ever, but also one of the best finishers. Ever. No, no, that one, it was good. On Deadly Alliance is the one that was... Oh, yeah, Deadly Alliance was the one where he stretched their head up. Their neck out, yeah. Yeah, four was the one where he just yanked their leg off and beat them to death. Yeah, with. that was like one yeah. of the best fatalities there. Now, we talking about good games, and I know we done got our sub Do y'all remember the uh, Sub-Zero Mythology game? Yeah. I do. I like that game. It's hard as crap, but I like it. Yeah, I, I had it for a little while. Uh, I, I tried mean, and tried. Both ways. <laughs> I, I understand exactly how the angry video game nerd feels about it because I spent days like, why does everything kill you so easily? Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, no, it took me a while to get past stage two, but once I did, it was... Once, once you get past certain points, you will not find your flow in it. It's just, man, it takes a while to get past Well, no, I take that back. After you get past stage three, then it ain't too bad after that. Other than the, the dinosaurs and crap and the big... Yeah, I, th I think stage uh, three was when he was jumping over those cliffs and everything. No, three's the... Uh, two, two's the cliffs. Three was the sewer level. Oh, that, that, that level was pretty easy to me. Man, I didn't like it, man. I couldn't pick, because you had to go, you had to run in those, into those uh, little things and use the key, and then the door would open and the water's coming out, and you're like, oh crap, what do I do? And you run, and you have to slide <laughs> under that door real fast before it closes. Like, man, why'd they do that? <laughs> yeah, you, you had to be something on that. You had to be yeah. something on that guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well we're about to uh, wrap it up, bro. Hey, it's four o'clock. Yep, this has been yeah. the uh, United Nations. It is <laughs> We hope y'all enjoyed it. I think we and, uh, and, just some uh, and, and, WWE uh, Royal Rumble pre-show. How's that yep. sound? And uh, of course, as has been mentioned in the video already, rest in peace to Brody Lee. Uh, who we who who else was it we mentioned here a moment ago, Chris? Uh, um, Chris Canyon. Yeah, Chris Canyon. Uh, yeah. Chris, rest in peace, Brody Lee, Chris Canyon. Thank you for everything that you did for the business, Dusty for everything you did to entertain Dusty us. Road. Dusty Road, man. God bless. God yeah. bless all of them. Yeah. We got to go watch you. some Royal Rumble. Yeah. Let me tell you something, baby. I'm in heaven, baby. <laughs> we got to go watch the Royal Rumble, baby. We're gonna see Vince <laughs> McMahon and his sweaty muscle contingent. St. Paul just hit me in the belly with it. But it's okay. <laughs> if you will. I have a lot of Billy Willie. Oh, we can yeah. all watch a bunch of big sweaty men throwing each other over the ropes if you understand, baby. What was that? What was that? What? He did, they did a pay per view one time and he couldn't say this big word. Every time he said it, he'd say it different. <laughs> it was, oh, it's glue. Uh, it's maximum. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like Star Trek. Right this this was kind of a Dusty Rhodes appreciation post here. <laughs> I want to say that was Star Trek. How could you not appreciate the American dream, baby? <laughs> it, matter of fact, does he have a DVD out? Did they release oh, yeah. a DVD? Oh, yeah, they got a yes. couple of DVDs for him. You can, you can probably find it on the network, I imagine. You oh, yeah, most likely. They, they got all that stuff on there. 
I got. Yeah, I, well, I, we're gonna I have, have to. We're gonna have to sit down and watch some some network at some point together, guys. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, we got old school DVDs, so we can do that too. Oh yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. Oh, this is just some of them. I got. I got more. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's got more. Oh yeah, there's plenty more back there. Yeah, plenty of them. But anyway, this has been the uh, Not to m- Mississippi, and uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Remember, subscribe, like, and share our content and our sites. Dang it! And for, and and for those of you watching, stay tuned because myself and Adam Smash here will be sitting down soon with Resident Evil 8 coming. Smash and I are going to run through some Resident Evil 7 before yeah. 8 drops. That so we're going to get on yet. some spectacular stuff. That yes, sir, Smash hasn't got to play, so we're gonna get the joy of running him through it for the first time. Yeah, so we will be letting everybody know when that's happening. In the meantime, tune in to Wilson Fist, tune in to Angry Chef, tune in to Fifth Dimension Films for all your bullet club needs, baby. Yeah. For now, we're gonna go watch some Royal Rumble. Yeah, United Nations of Wrestling, buddy. Bullet Club. Stay and- tuned, folks. Represent. Way more coming. Where you at, Fist? United Nations of Wrestling and Bullet Club. There you are. Where, where it at, man? Throw it up. There he is. Yeah. And we will see you all very soon. No money. <laughs> no money. No money. <laughs> <laughs> see y'all, fellas. All right, all right. <laughs>